So we ran into our first issue with the TDI FJ Cruiser. These have a uh, service bulletin for the camshafts wearing prematurely. So I did a quick inspection by removing the oil cap and taking a, whoops, taking a, a look in there at the rear cam lobe and it's pretty worn down. Um, I'm having some low power issues coming from a standstill and I have a MAF sensor code which all points towards the camshaft. This is a really common issue for these PD Volkswagen TDI engines from 2004 up. So today we're gonna replace that. I bought this camshaft kit with a billet camshaft. So this is much stronger than the cast camshafts. It came with some nice INA um, nitride coated lifters, assembly lube, stretch bolts, a uh, tandem pump gasket, some camshaft bearings, and a camshaft seal. It does not come with a valve cover gasket, which I ordered separately. Ordered a spare camshaft seal, crankshaft seal if I happen to be in there and it's easy to replace. A timing belt tool, and then I bought a second timing belt tool with the camshaft pulley remover tool, just in case. I might not even end up using this. So, yeah, let's get to it. I've never actually replaced a camshaft before, so this is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be quite the learning experience on my end as well. Once the valve cover is off, it's a good idea to uh, mark all the injector arms, mark the timing belt here, make sure everything's at top dead center with the tools. This is a crankshaft locking tool that is installed. There are two marks there. can't really see them but there's an arrow on the tool and a line on this sprocket and then just in case I mark the timing belt to the crankshaft sprocket as well now that I know the engine that top dead center I'm gonna remove the tandem pump just make sure that the camshaft the teeth that sit on the tandem pump here, these two. Just make sure they're parallel with the head. So we'll grab our inspection mirror and our flashlight, go back here. And see that? That line on the mirror, if that's parallel with the cylinder head, then you know you are at top dead center and the camshaft can be removed. There's a really loud squeak coming from the car when I accelerate under boost. And when I did the smoke test, I found smoke coming out of here. 
it's not supposed to rotate like that, that freely. So um, this is a common problem as well. People just put epoxy on here and then it seals it right up. So we got the timing belt off. I just had to pull the idler pulley and then loosen the tensioner here. So now we need our triple square and we'll take off the arms. So the reason why I opted out of the puller is because I don't want to loosen these three bolts because this adjusts the, the cam timing and um, they're really sensitive. So whatever little bit of adjustment you do, you can affect the fuel mileage or the car might not start. So I decided to mark it just in case and um, I'm not touching these three bolts. You can see the wear there. Yeah, the lifters have some wear, but they're still relatively flat. So that's good to see. You line up this tooth into this groove. And you just kind of work it in. As long as the bearing is flush with the head, you're good to go. Make sure each bearing, you can see that little hole in there. That's where the oil will come out of and lubricate the camshaft. So just make sure you can see that hole. Well, here's some valuable information. When installing the camshaft, you tighten 
the bearing caps two and four alternately and diagonally to eight newton meters plus 90 degrees. So you'll be cranking down, let's see, two and four, like an X pattern until you reach eight newton meters and then you add another 90 degrees. That's the torque spec. The rocker arms tighten the inner two and then the outer one evenly. So di <clears throat> the diagram's over here. In a diagonal sequence, tightening torque is 20 newton meters plus additional 90 degrees. So if you don't have a digital torque wrench, you can mark the bolt on one end and then as you tighten it, you can visually see how much the bolt head has turned and then that's your that's how you get your degrees here and these are stretch bolts so they are one time use uh, just keep that in mind when you do a camshaft on one of these so I cleaned each bearing cap and I put the new bearing in uh, make sure that notch is lined up once again just like in the cylinder head so now all I have to do is put some assembly lube on everything here, drop the camshaft in, and tighten everything to spec. This is critical. You do definitely don't want to start the engine dry. So put a bunch of this on. Brand new camshaft. You can see the bevel here. My old cam was actually completely worn down and this edge was sharp. So, yeah, that's how you tell if your cam's worn. We'll carefully set this in here. Be sure not to scuff anything up as you're dropping it in. So we'll set the torque wrench to eight newton meters, not foot pounds. It's very little force, you can do it with one finger. Once it hits eight, stop, hit this one. And then switch the units to degrees. I'm reassembling the rockers now. One thing to note is um, to make sure you have this shaft pointed in the right direction, not 180 degrees out. You want this notch to line up with that hole, like that. Don't forget to install a new cam seal. I just used a big socket and uh, lightly tapped it in with a hammer. I was able to slip the timing belt back on without loosening these three bolts. Everything is still locked in place. Tensioner I tightened to 15 foot-pounds. I mean the idler. And the tensioner, you just have to rotate it 
make sure the square is seated inside the cover here. You rotate it until that arrow gets into that window there. Once it's in that window, you can torque it down to 15 foot-pounds plus 45 degrees and uh, you'll be all set. Throw the valve cover on, spin the motor, motor two times and make sure nothing's seized. And once you're done with that, fire it up. Okay, we got everything all buttoned up. Got some battle scars. But, uh, yeah, we just gotta fire it up. Run it at 2000 RPM, break the cams in, and then do an oil change. I already did the break-in procedure earlier, so I'm just gonna let the car chill. Sounds pretty healthy though. <laughs> 